Hi, my name is Cassandra Stelter. Thank you for joining me today. As you probably know, there are many different ways to use Microsoft Teams to support emergency management. One way is to use Microsoft Teams as a virtual emergency operations center. Just like designing a physical EOC, structuring the virtual EOC is a process that requires planning and consideration. One of the first decisions you will need to make is to decide whether you want one team that houses many incidents or to create a new team for each incident or event that your EOC manages. In this video, I'm going to walk through both approaches and a couple of pros and cons for each. Let's start with the single team with many incidents. As you can see, I have a single team that has multiple incidents organized by channel. When you approach it this way, it's important to remember that your general channel is going to be in place for a very long time. Therefore, it's important to set it up correctly early on. In the Posts tab, you're probably going to want to clarify for your users exactly how you expect them to engage with this information. This includes how you're going to moderate content. My recommendation is that you make this serve as sort of an announcement board and encourage people to chat in the channel specific to the incident. Likewise, when you structure your files, make sure these are the sorts of things that apply to anything your EOC is doing, rather than any personal stuff or incident-specific things. Be particularly careful as you set up your tabs across the top because you don't want people to get confused about where they're supposed to do their work. Otherwise, as the emergency manager, you're going to be spending a lot of time moving people's content around. Now let's talk about the incident itself. In this pretend incident here, I have set up my post board to welcome people into the EOC. This is an important way to make sure people know where they're supposed to be and what you want for them. Remember that the posts tab is sort of a running log of everything that happens within this channel and it's going to get full really quickly. So make use of the pin feature and make sure you teach people to thread messages appropriately. In the Files tab, you're going to want to make sure you only collect the information about this incident. And that means you might want to make a file folder for each of the different sections that are staffed within your EOC. If you're going to create forms that are duplicated from the general channel, make sure you clearly label the file folders so people don't get confused. Using the whiteboard as a message board feature is an excellent way to keep the EOC organized and on track for what we're talking about. I also recommend making a new Tasks tab every time you create an incident. Within the Tasks tab, then, you can create the buckets that are appropriate for how your EOC is structured. Remember, when you're working in Microsoft Teams, you can change the way the Tasks feature displays to be a chart, to be a schedule, to look like a board, or, unique to Microsoft Teams, the list feature. If you're going to use this approach, it might be helpful to have a template channel that reminds you how you want each channel to look when you have a new event. The reason is because you can't create template channels that are copyable. You're going to have to make a new one every time. But if you always have a template channel like this, then you know what it's supposed to look like when you first start. If you're interested in learning a neat way to make this an automatic process, make sure you visit my other videos. One of the drawbacks to using this approach is you can't archive an individual channel. You can hide the channel, but it never completely goes away. That means if you start managing many different incidents or events within this EOC, it might get confusing for your users to make sure they're all in the right place. Spending the time to construct and configure this correctly is really important for your end goal. These sorts of EOCs are particularly useful for small organizations or when you're just starting out and deciding if you like Teams or not. Okay, now let's talk about when you make a new team for every incident that your team manages. That's my little blue team down here for that same pretend winter storm. I'm gonna make that go away, okay. So remember, every time you make a team, you get a general channel. But this general channel is unique to this team, so you can be a little more flexible about the kind of content that shows up in here. You can give people the latitude to be a little silly or to blow off some steam. Just remind everybody that this information is going to be archived as part of the permanent record for the incident or event, and that professional rules should apply. As you begin to configure your tabs in the general channel, again, remember, this is going to be stuff that you want to apply to the whole incident or event. You can still put your general ICS forms, templates, plans, things like that in here. Just make sure people know where to go. 
You'll notice up across the top that I have a lot of the same tabs I had in my other channels. I think these are useful and I use them almost all the time. In particular, I like to keep the running activity log where everyone submits their own 214 for all of their activities as they go. And then I use this as sort of a status board in my EOC, but you can set it up however works best for you. As you begin to grow the incident in complexity, you can add new channels to help create further organization within your team. None of these are required, and you may find that for some incidents, you don't need any channels except the general and the after action. And in some incidents or events, you need many channels for all of the sections of the EOC. For this sample, I've made just a couple to show a few different features. I do recommend that you always make an after action channel when you make events that are standalone like this and that you do it pretty much right away. And that's because one of the best practices I've encountered is to let people start documenting their hot, nosh, hot wash notes right away. This can be just a simple Word document that allows people to document their strengths and opportunities as they go, uh, or you could use a more formal tracking feature. This becomes important if you're working a prolonged incident or if you have a lot of turnover throughout your EOC. We don't always have an opportunity to have a formal in-person hot wash, particularly in the virtual environment, so this encourages good documentation of the things that might get lost otherwise. Another advantage of using this particular structure is you can create channels that are private. You can tell they're private because they have the little lock next to them, and that means that only certain people added to the team can see this. It won't show up for everybody. So this is a great way, for example, to allow your policy group to have private conversations and discussions that may not be appropriate for everyone else to see. You can conduct meetings in this channel that are archived and recorded for no one but the people who have access. This is an excellent feature. When you are done with the team, you can actually close out and archive the team if you have administrative permissions within your IT department. If you don't know how to do that, make sure you talk to your IT professionals. So let's review the pros and cons. First, let's start with making a single team that has many incidents attached to it. The pros are that it's great for small teams that don't have a lot of complexity in how they're structured. It's pretty much always ready to go because you've built it at one time and then it stays open forever. And it's great if you're going to build a lot of customized workflows. If you're interested in learning about some of those workflows, make sure to check out my other videos. Some negative elements of this approach is that users might get confused about which channel they're supposed to work in. And it lumps all of the different sections together. So if your EOC is very complex in its activation, it might be hard to tell people where they should be doing their work. It's incredibly difficult to archive these teams because you can't archive by channel and you can't use templates for channels, which means if you haven't done a lot of work with customized workflows, it can be difficult to get it up and running in an emergency. Some of the pros and cons for using many different teams that are assigned to specific incidents are that they're easy to adapt and customize the users for each incident type. They're good for complex organizations in the team, they're archived easily, and templates are available. In fact, when you build templates in this structure, you can make them custom to the organization, or you can build it as a team and then just keep copying the team. Some negative parts of this approach are that it could be unwieldy in organizations with lots of teams. If you have lots of incidents that are hanging out there and you haven't archived them, it may be hard to find the right kind of incident that you want to work in. And every time you open it, you are going to have to do some configuration and setup. If you are interested in learning about how to create templates and to copy teams, make sure you check out my How to Duplicate Teams video. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Thank you for your time and make sure to visit us for more tips and tricks on using Microsoft Teams in the virtual EOC.